All right, to watch this video for Friday, November 9th. Um, as often happens when you get a big move in the market, uh, like we did yesterday, the Dow was up like 550 points, uh, oftentimes you get a fraction of that and a choppy, sideways, boring day on much lower volume. That's what we had today. Um, I had one trade today that made any sense, and it was all because of a, a Benzinga squawk on DXR. Uh, I, ha I was able to grab it right here. And I made 325 bucks in it. Uh, it is literally like the only uh, trade. I had so many missed trades that I just couldn't get in. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But it was just a goofy day. But uh, as I said in chat, tomorrow's a reset, right? Tomorrow we have a brand new morning gap plays. We have a brand new day. And uh, the post FOMC day is behind us. Um, or I'm sorry, the FOMC day is behind us. And I, I've never been a fan of trading the afternoons. And, and really, honestly, the mornings before the FOMC announcement can be pretty uh, sideways too because people don't want to make a commitment and hold into the FOMC announcement. And then afterwards you get chaos. And uh, let me just show you five minute candles real quick. Um, so I'll zoom in a little bit. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So this is the FOMC and, and you can kind of watch it unfold if I do it. There's the announcement. Uh oh, we're tanking. No, we're not. We're going to go right back to that. No, we're going to tank. Um, and. <laughs> It's total chop. Look at that. So uh, I never did like trading that environment, um, but I think I have a decent watch list for tomorrow. One other thing I want to show real quick too is uh, NBEV. I've been talking about this daily chart. You know, this kind of bounce on the pot stocks, the sideways move, starting to break out to the upside today. Kind of a quiet inside day, but it's been one of my you know pot, go to pot stocks when the pot stocks move. Um, but you always hear me say I, I don't hold anything overnight. Uh, I won't even hold my wife overnight, right? Because um, I like to be in cash every night. Anyway, uh, the joke's getting old, I'm sure. But anyway, the point being, uh, as I'm talking right now, it's trading uh, around four bucks because uh, they, they uh, put out an offering uh, announcement. And so it's all the way down here. So that's, that's generally why I don't swing trade. Um, I, I, it just, it's just for me, since I can find intraday setups, A plus setups, inflection point setups, you know, uh, using level two in combination with the chart. Um, for me, there's just no reason to risk uh, holding overnight uh, much more comfortable day trading. So anyway, having said that, here's what I'm watching for tomorrow. Um, SLS, uh, I kind of like this chart, right? Um, you had this big volume spike back here that went up to 230. Uh, then it looked like it was rolling over. And then next thing you know, it pops up on bigger volume to almost two. It went to 193 and now kind of straight sideways. Today it hit 191. Certainly looks good, like it might break out through two, maybe test these highs, and if it gets above these highs, uh, could squeeze. So uh, that's probably my favorite chart going into tomorrow. This DXR, I talked about this a lot. That's the one I made at 300 something dollars on today. Um, that move was on the entire day, 355,000 shares. Having said that, I really like this chart. It had this big volume spike back here that topped out at 939, then it put in a lower high, got through eight, and got rejected. Um, it actually took out this high yesterday, went up to 820 and got slapped down again. And then today topped out at 803. So I love this over this two day high. I think it might retest these highs. It's, it's definitely a decent setup for a squeeze. Um, you know, maybe uh, the number eight will come into play tomorrow as a whole number uh, inflection point, depending on the intraday setup, right? All that stuff we teach in our course. So SLS and DXR are my two favorite charts going into tomorrow. Um, this one's kind of obscure, but if, if the pot stocks move, and I don't know if uh, an offering in NBEV is going to hurt any of the pot stocks or not, I, I really wouldn't suspect that it will, but you never know. Um, this one is in that group, and it topped out right below nine. So this one might be a, whole, you know, a trade through nine, and then you've got one, two potential catalysts just above. So I want to watch YGYI, again, preferably uh, with the pot stocks moving. Um, ACRX was on bounce watch today. It did bounce. Um, and actually pushed all the way up to 411 before settling in at 391. I'm just gonna I'll switch to 15 minute candles here and show you. So you had this uh, nice bounce that topped out right here and then I guess kind of held up for the rest of the session. Um, for me, it's interesting, maybe back through four, we might have a, another whole number inflection point might come into play. Um, not in love with that chart though, but we'll see. Uh, BOXL, it's kind of an interesting chart. You had this big day and then an inside day and then another inside day. Um, but I really needed to break like 365 today's high. Then you might knock down this catalyst, hole number four might come into play and so on. Um, but when we go to intraday, uh, it, it hit uh, like 360 and then went through that again, kind of rolled over. 
Um, so for me, it needs to really kind of get over 365 before it's interesting, but you never know. We might get a better intraday setup um, and we might get no setup at all. NVLN, I, I was on the fence about putting this on a chart, um, but it actually did trade 39, almost 40 million shares and it had an intraday range of 71 cents to what was the high, uh, 235. But you see that it gave a lot of that back. So you got a lot of people underwater and if they're, you know, the, the selection of people that are still holding, the holding hopers, I call them. Um, so it's kind of intraday, it's kind of weird, right? Uh, this is one, if you saw me, if you follow me on social media uh, or you were in chat today, you heard me complaining about all the halts because I absolutely love this one. You guys that know my buy zone strategy, right about here, right? But unfortunately, I wanted to get there generically, not uh, the halts just throw me off so bad. It, 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 you could make the argument in hindsight that uh, you're bidding in a, in a spot that you like is bidding in a spot that you like no matter what. Um, I actually did bid at 119 down here when this was halted. My thinking was it might uh, try to test the, uh, the 20 period moving average on five minute candles. So I was bidding at 119. Anyway, so after this halt, it then opens here right in that spot where I, um, uh, anyway, the dog, dog just went nuts because somebody knocked at the door. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what I, the last thing I said was, but uh, it, you know, it, to me, it's kind of a learning day for me as far as um, you know, just placing my bid. This is exactly the spot, right in the middle of these two lines. That's exactly the area um, that I would like to have bid. I had I bid a little lower, but that you know, again, the halts throw me off, um, and it opened right there. And even Jane, if you were in chat today, Jane said, "Hey, it's right there in the buy zone." And, uh, I never did ask her if she got it, but man, it went up huge from there. So that was one bid that I didn't get filled because I was a little too low. Um, and I never, I watched this thing run from 70 something cents to 230 and never caught an entry. I'm not very proud of that. Um, I also saw it right here, but it happened too quickly. And I also felt at that point like I was chasing because it made such a, uh, for lack of a better term, such a stupid move. Um, so with all that said, uh, I still think it's worth having on watch tomorrow. I mean, 40 million shares. Uh, I always prefer these to close a little stronger, um, but we're going to have that on watch. I, I kind of suspect I probably won't catch a trade in it, but we'll see. LCI, really nice move today. Um, closing pretty darn strong uh, on really nice volume. So we're going to watch out for a follow through day tomorrow. AAOI, a uh, nice little kind of mini breakout of this range. It's in down here, big volume. Um, it's, you know, it went from below probably eight or nine days worth of trading to above eight or nine days worth of trading. So that's kind of a big candle. Um, definitely want to watch it for a follow through day tomorrow. And then CNAT, which is a little bit extended, but uh, CNAT had this really big pop, came back down, um, and then it's actually holding up really well too. So I gotta tell you, I'm not in love with this list, but I know we're gonna add some gappers to this list in pre-market. Um, and I'm hoping we find some decent gappers. It, it only takes one decent setup and one decent trade to make your day. So um, that's what I've got. And I'm um, hoping we catch some nice gappers tomorrow. Because like I said, well, actually, let me go back real quick. I wanted to say that I'm not in love with this list, but I really do like this um, SLS and DXR. So those are my two favorites going into tomorrow. And certainly going to keep an eye on all the pot stocks too, all right? Enjoy your evening. We'll see everybody tomorrow.